The mysterious, the curious, the blurriest. From the beginning of time, man has wondered about mysteries. Are they fiction or are they fact? The Eberling Enigma. Submitted for your examination, Eberling, a name synonymous with innovation, a name on which fortunes were made through startling, prolific inventions. A name known also to disappear. Thomas Eberling was at the height of his brilliant career, and some said working on his most ingenious invention yet, when he suddenly disappeared from public life forever, more than 150 years ago. But what happened to Thomas? Was he the victim of foul play by a jealous rival? Or had he stumbled upon something so powerful that it had to be kept hidden? Thomas's genius was inherited by the latest Aberling, Max Aberling, a virtual rock star in the up-and-coming scientific community. Unfortunately, genius was not the only thing these two men had in common. So too were their penchants for disappearing. But why did he vanish too? Max was last seen ten years ago at this infamous Einstein Awards banquet where hundreds of the world's top minds were saved when a fire alarm cleared the room just moments before the ceiling collapsed. But when the ceiling collapsed, Max, like a rock star, had left the building. How could a man, even a genius such as Max, have predicted such an event? Yet this footage clearly suggests that Max Haberling did just that. Why would a man admired by all and a hero to many walk away from his newfound fame? Surely the key to this mystery is more than the simple wish to avoid the notorious scientific paparazzi. What are the secrets being held by the Eberling estate? Did the Eberling genius come with a price? The price of a curse? The world may never know, but that won't stop us from wondering whatever became of this modern mystery. What I really want to know, Dad, is why you're wearing sunglasses everywhere except where you need them most. I thought I heard your father's voice. I don't think so. You're imagining your ghosts again. No, I'm certain I heard him, Anna. As clear as if he were standing right here. Have you felt a shiver coming over you, Mum? Why did Dad wear sunglasses all the time? Well, why don't you just ask him? He's probably in your bathroom. Sometimes he likes to go... No, Mum. What you were hearing was that mystery show. I was watching it again. This is how you want to spend your birthday. No, listen. I think I found something interesting this time. You see, it's the sunglasses. I think you're going to find this much more interesting. What's this? I found it a few weeks ago in an old shoebox. For well, my daughter Anna, on her 16th birthday. Has this been hidden in the house all this time? Either that or one of the ghosts left it. What is it? What does this mean? Maybe it's a way to contact your father on the other side. Don't you see? Maybe it means he's still alive. I know it's been ten years, but I always had the feeling... If he were still alive, would I be seeing his ghost everywhere? Would I? No, but maybe he's stuck or trapped somewhere or held captive by someone. Maybe he's helping Tintin find Professor Calculus. <laughs> Seriously, Mum? You really don't know anything about his work? 
Never you mind, never you mind. It's best left alone for your own good. And so on and so on. That is what Max always said to me. And that is what I say to you, my sweet. Now, I ordered in some nice birthday cake and I suddenly feel a nasty draft coming from somewhere. Whew. Are you coming down? But what if these things are clues that will help me find him? It's best left alone. I know my father wanted me to have this for a reason. And I intend to find out what it is. At least we've got plumbing. That's the only improvement they've done in 150 years. We always have to swap batteries in this house. Chemistry notes. Mum won't let me do any of the lab experiments. She says somebody might blow something up. <laughs> Ugh, stuff that looks gross on me. I wasn't made for this century. Hmm, stuff I've outgrown. I once posted a video of me playing Seven Nation Army. Nobody watched it, thank God. I should take Mom's boots. She'll probably ask for them later. I don't know why I even need a mirror. I almost never get to go out. Bunsen Bunny! I always played emergency vet with him and father. Dad had a thing for rabbits in distress, I guess. I've read all the books on it. Meant to recycle that hanger. It's all chemistry, and not the romantic kind either. up that high. It's dangerous. Sigh. No one's going to fix this except me. Mother's been hoarding incandescent bulbs. Perfect fit. It's an old mechanical diorama. My mother always said it was a family heirloom too delicate for kids to play with. But now I wonder if it has something to do with my father's disappearance. I need to figure out what it does, once and for all. The glass is really dark, but I think there might be something in the center. It might work.
It looks like a tiny speaker. There was probably something attached to amplify sound at one time. I'm not vacuuming on my birthday. The only time you took off your sunglasses and the sun was in your eyes. Odd. My house keys are missing. I'll bet Mom knows where they are. The storm knocked out our phones. The old family cuckoo clock still works perfectly. As long as someone remembers to wind it. Oh, now it's too hot. Would you turn it down? I know what they are. Socks. Mother doesn't like lit candles. They lead to house fires. It looks stale. My party balloons! Might come in handy. I'll keep them in mind. Cards from mother and some relatives. Huh. My friends don't send cards. They'd never get past quite an inferno. I've always been a little scared of fire. Do you know how to make the diorama work? Stay away from it, Anna. They use it to get into the house. It's just the old place creaking, Mum. If it were just the house settling, then why are my feet cold? So cold. The house is not settling. It's possessed! Cold feet. That's my mother. If she were in a sauna, and the sauna was in the Sahara, and the Sahara was in full summer, what would she have? Cold feet. Still, she might be right about that diorama being connected to my ancestors. Somehow. I see the fuse blew in the gallery again. Maybe rats chewed the wires, but I didn't want to call the electricians. They might fall off a ladder or burn the house down. Better off left alone. But isn't it good to look at all the family portraits in there once in a while? Best stay out of there. I only use it for storage now. You might trip on something and kill yourself. People don't kill themselves tripping on things. Maybe those portraits can give me some clues that will help me. That's where you're wrong, Anna. It happens all the time. back from those windows, Anna. You're taking a big risk getting struck by lightning. I don't want to add your ghost to all the other spirits in this house. I think the risk of lightning coming through the window is pretty small. Everyone believes the risk is small just before something bad happens to them. Your father was forever taking risks and look what happened. The best risk is no risk. That's why I don't go outside anymore. Just out of curiosity, who's going to take care of you when I go away to university, Mum? Who said you are going away to university? I already lost your father. He was here one day and gone the next. I'm never going to take that chance with you. You expect me to stay cooped up in this house like you for the rest of my life? Well, if you leave this house, you may not have a rest of your life. But if I never leave the house, I won't have a life at all. Ugh, you're being dramatic. Besides, you have all the Abeling ghosts to amuse you. Mum must have locked the door. My keys are usually right here.
The fire's too high. It'll burn the house down. She makes me blow out unlit candles on my birthday and it drives me mad. It's been out too long. Probably not safe to eat. It's too risky to go in. Here's a flashlight and a 15 amp fuse. The last fuse in the house. to have a power source. Done. I took everything I need. The fire's too high. It'll burn the house down. Quite an inferno. I've always been a little scared of fire. Thermostats in here. The fireplace should be low now. Mum will be unhappy. The fireplace is back to normal. The fireplace must be crazy hot now. I don't like putting it up that high. It's dangerous. The fireplace should be low now. Mum will be unhappy. to fix it, but I can't walk on this floor. It's too cold. Was there some reason why you locked the front door and took my house keys? I'm sorry, Anna, but I was afraid you'd go out into the storm and get hit by lightning. What are the odds of that? Zero. As long as you stay in the house. Where 
Where did Father do his experiments? He went to the Institute. But when he was here, did he have a lab? He locked himself in the study. I'm 16. How about a drink? Heavens no. Too dangerous. How much trouble can I get into here? Can we go somewhere to celebrate? And drive on these roads? In a storm? Mom's warm boots. They don't fit my misshapen feet. I can't reset the thermostat when my feet are blocks of ice. your feet warm. Oh, I suppose I can fix the fireplace myself now. How does this work? I think I did it! Are you still getting chills? I always feel a draft when ghosts are active in the house. I'm too cold to sleep. going to find anything new in there. It makes me look like a kid. Point in knowing the time. Every day here's the same. The glass reminds me of sunglasses or welding goggles. That won't help me understand it. Experiment is going to fail.
The storm knocked out our phones. That doesn't need a fuse. Another family heirloom, but Mum never minded when I played with it. I'm not vacuuming on my... The thermostat's in here. I vaguely remember my father fiddling with this before he went away. It might have some connection to the glass vial. Or not. That won't help me understand it. Audio comes out here, but it needs something to boost the volume. That won't help me understand it. She gives me socks every year. amps or less. Somebody needs to tear out all the wiring in this house and start from scratch. Please don't blow up in my face. Great. I won't need the flashlight anymore. Nothing interesting there. I've searched it a hundred times. Nothing interesting there. I've searched it a hundred times. Ancient furniture. Stuff that reminds us of father. Mum's old windsurfing board. Ha! She wouldn't get within radar range of Lake Zurich today. My father's old motorbike. Once upon a time, people had fun around here. But somewhere along the line, fun turned into dangerous. We got copies of almost every newspaper in Switzerland when father disappeared. But we never found a clue about where he'd gone. Max Abeling. 1968, uh, so this is my father, Max. I don't remember much about him, really. I was only six the last time I saw him. Again, scientist. And again, nobody seemed to know what he was working on. I don't know what it is with this family and mystery projects. Not so exciting when it's next to a motorbike. Mansions and novels never have leaky roofs. Victor Abeling, 1936 to 1998. The story on Conrad's son Victor is that he ruffled the family feathers when he threw away a promising career as a surgeon for a life at sea. Officially, he crossed the world as captain of trading vessels of questionable origins while documenting the diffusion of infectious diseases. Which sounds like the Abeling way of saying he was a smuggler. If there was ever any proof one way or the other, it was lost at sea when his ship and everyone on it went down in a heavy storm. Was it the Abeling family curse?
Avoid that. My favorite ancestor is Thomas Aberling, my great-great-great-grandfather. He was also a pretty great scientist and inventor. Hmm, something about this portrait looks new. Edgar Eberling, 1847 to 1892. Edgar was a scientist like Thomas, but according to Mom, he wasn't as brilliant. He spent most of his life traveling the world, probably to get away from the expectations of his famous father. He did a good job of it too, because no one even knew where he was for years. Then all of a sudden he came back and started giving public lectures warning about the dangers of gas lighting. Which is odd because he died in a theater fire. He also had a reputation as a ladies' man but never married. How's that for colorful? that desk years ago. Someone emptied it the day father disappeared. That was my best memory as a kid, but now all I can think is, were you already planning to leave us? Now, nothing's more important than working late with you guys. I love work so much. I put my famous career above everything else. It's 150 years old. That's close to 10 of my lifetimes. That lampshade's getting burned by the bulb. Leave it. I never liked it. Wonder which Aberling shot that beautiful creature. I suppose he would be dead by now anyway. Nothing happened. What did I do wrong? What did Thomas want me to do? you wrong? What did Thomas want me to do? Didn't we have a ladder here? What happened to it? Edgar Ebeling was elected into the Royal Society in 1877. I wonder why Thomas' certificate isn't here too. Raphus cucullatus. That's Latin for dodo bird. Everyone knows it's been extinct for centuries. A photo of father avoiding us. I'll figure it out someday.
Nothing happened. What did I do wrong? Nothing happened. What did I do wrong? What did Thomas want me to do? any patterns in these numbers. There's definitely a trick here. I just need more information. My great times three grandfather. Something's odd about that painting. Purple checked coat. Blue striped bird. I don't think so. Green book with circles. Red rose. Strange details. this old thing. <gasps> it fits perfectly! Understanding of what I have discovered, this must be held in absolute secrecy. Should you have any doubts along the way, Darwin will assist you. the secret of Pepper's ghost. My name is Thomas Ebel, and I designed this automaton to test your intellect and strength of purpose. But this is only the first test. My years of private research have resulted in a momentous discovery. I have harnessed a power which may prove to be of immense benefit to mankind, but which also holds the potential for unprecedented destruction. After witnessing this destruction in my own son Edgar, I had determined that mankind was not yet ready to possess it. For this reason, I built a secure laboratory to continue my work in secrecy. However, as dangerous as this power can be, I could not in good conscience permit its virtues to be lost to humanity. It became necessary for me to make provisions for my eventual demise. The secure area can only be accessed from my study. To gain entry, you will need to count the specific hours of the day, beginning with the zero hour. And the code to those hours is in this book. Remember this book, and the starting point, the zero hour. A word of warning. You are about to embark on a perilous journey. Until you have come to a full understanding of what I have discovered, this must be held in absolute secrecy. Should you have any doubts along the way, Darwin will assist you. Thomas held a book called Liber Abaci. He was saying something about it, but I couldn't hear him. Thomas 
had a book called Liber Abaci. He was saying something about it, but I couldn't hear him. See what that'll do. That seems good. Let me try a few more. Nothing happened. What did I do wrong? What did Thomas want me to do? Thomas had a book called Liber Abaci. He was saying something about it, but I couldn't hear him. Empty. Father didn't leave a note. Doesn't make sense. Not so exciting when it's next to a motorbike. Abeling, 1878 to 1941. Conrad showed up after Edgar's death. Some people wondered if he was really Edgar's son, but he had the Abeling inventor gene sure enough. He designed and piloted early airships, which is pretty cool. But the big thing he was working on was the first aerial map of the whole planet. It was supposedly the most detailed map ever made, but I've never seen it. No one has. It was either lost or stolen or else it never really existed. Conrad died in an airship accident in World War II. I need to fix this old thing. Understanding of what I have discovered, this must be held in absolute secrecy. Should you have any doubts along the way, Darwin will assist you. I congratulate you on discovering the secret of Pepper's ghost. My name is Thomas Ebel, and I designed this automaton to test your intellect and strength of purpose. But this is only the first test. My years of private research have resulted in a momentous discovery. I have harnessed a power which may prove to be of immense benefit to mankind, but which also holds the potential for unprecedented destruction. After witnessing this destruction in my own son Edgar, I had determined that mankind was not yet ready to possess it. For this reason, I built a secure laboratory to continue my work in secrecy. However, as dangerous as this power can be, I could not in good conscience permit its virtues to be lost to humanity. It became necessary for me to make provisions for my eventual demise. The secure area can only be accessed from my study. To gain entry, you will need to count the specific hours of the day, beginning with the zero hour. And the code to those hours is in this book. Remember this book and the starting point, the zero hour. A word of warning. You are about to embark on a perilous journey. Until you have come to a full understanding of what I have discovered, this 
must be held in absolute secrecy. Should you have any doubts along the way, Darwin will assist you. Logical. Not a great idea. <laughs> 